Hi everyone, this is Forrest for Faulty Lid, and today we're going to be reviewing a Soldier 76 attack on Dorado. This player is around 3500 SR, uh, so a master tier player, and this is taken from a scrimmage that was between seasons. The number one problem I see in Soldier 76 players is that they play too far forward and kind of dive in at their targets. Now, I don't think this player has that problem at all. So, what we really need to be looking at is the other things that he's doing, a lot of the little things. Now, one thing I do notice is he throws around his rockets a little bit liberally. He throws this rocket, he shoots it at this Roadhog. Uh, right when his McCree gets hooked and bubbled. And I, I don't hate this rocket because, you know, maybe you're putting out enough damage for the McCree to get the kill on the Roadhog, but it's a general habit I see this player have. Uh, I like to save my rockets to finish players off to secure frags. It might benefit this player to be a little bit more conservative with that rocket and try to keep it for when he knows that knockout's coming. So like with this right here, with this Reaper, you know, he kills this Reaper really quickly. But uh, in the scenario where this Reaper reacts fast enough to being shot at, he's going to Wraith form out of there. And that's really where that rocket could have been more useful. It works out for us here, but it's a general thing I want to keep in mind. We want to keep that rocket for when we know we're going to secure a frag. Again, we fire off the rocket immediately off of cooldown. And we've got this McCree here who's very, very low health. This McCree took most of that damage was from that rocket, it looked like. Now, what's going to happen is this McCree is going to get away. We kill that Symmetra, but this McCree gets back into this alley right here. And we kind of lose our chance to get a shot on him because this is actually a Roadhog. It's a little bit low resolution, but that's a Roadhog. And we don't really want to be peeking at that Roadhog. So I can understand the... The wanting to back off, especially when it seems like this fight is is such in our favor, and we want to really just cap this first point and get it done with, because Dorado's first point is a doozy. So I, I think if you had that rocket available and you didn't throw it at the start, you actually would have just taken down that McCree's health with bullets and then been able to finish him with that rocket. If you look at this kill feed here, our McCree just died. We've got a Roadhog, a McCree and an Ana in our back line, and we decide to go get the respawns. And we see this gift of a kill right here because we see Reaper shadow stepping in, and we're gonna kill him very, very easily. But I feel like this is, you know, maybe it was a calculated risk, maybe it wasn't, but to leave those three enemies in your back line while you had no DPS back there, it does seem a little bit risky. Uh, <clears throat> And then we drop our biotic fields right right down. This could have been risky if you had thrown it down this early and they came to contest because when they actually contested, you wouldn't have had your biotic fields. So again, it works out here. But these are the kind of, you know, it was a split second thing that Reinhardt almost made it to point. He almost got his charge onto point in time and then it would have been contested. Those are the type of things you need to be focusing on at this level of play. It's You've got the core concepts of what it means to play a hero at a high level down, and now it's about making every little step along the way as best as it can possibly be. So now we finally get around to that Roadhog in the background. That McCree actually ends up killing her on it, but it's fine because we're at our spawn and it's really going to be no big deal. It's not going to really slow us down. But that was my concern with why we were pushing up earlier is that we they'd get some picks on us from behind while we really weren't paying much attention to them. And then the contest would come and our attack could have just fallen apart kind of easily. So I think when you have those kills with that man advantage, you want to just be with your team and help them out. But it all worked out nonetheless. Now, we got some kills on some enemies that were trickling out, which is good. And now we're setting up for the next area. He chooses to go inside this church here. And what I think I would have done is I would have just continued on and taken this high ground here. Maybe wait another four or five seconds or so for my team to continue to push the cart. But I think I would have set up there instead of going inside to here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now... He comes here, he's being very sneaky, 
But what we didn't do on our cheeky flank is check the courtyard. So we actually don't really have a good idea of who is down there. And oh, Luke, my bad. Fine. There's a roadhog. So honestly, I don't love this window spot in general, because if you look at it, we're in basically a corridor. Uh, the only thing to aim at in this window is you. You just have to point your cursor to this window and we're hitting you. There's no there's no wiggle room for you to move, maneuver in and avoid being hit. If you took out this Ana here, it almost wouldn't have mattered. Like, there would have been a good play. Whether it was kind of risky or not, it, it would have been capitalized on. But I think in general, I would have just come to this high ground, not done the the high risk, high reward play. I don't think we really needed to do the high risk, high reward play. I think we could have just come around here and then hit tactical visor and um, force them to turn the shield to try to protect you. Or may maybe they don't for turn the shield in time and you get some picks. I, I think just playing the traditional approach here would have been best. Alpha Yuk, my bad. Fuck. So your team's down two people. I think your team actually might just clutch this. Use some ultimates. Um, I thought this was kind of a weird rocket that he uses right here. You know, we've got this Graviton Surge. I don't understand Portuguese. Maybe you knew exactly who was in it. But what we can do is just fire our rocket right into this point right here. Like right into this where the, like the wall meets the corner. Splash damage whatever is in this Graviton. Instead we throw it as like a, a high angle shot up onto that bridge. Which is... Not the worst. I do those quite a bit myself, but it, you know, we didn't really even have a good view of who was up there. We just shot it right between the middle of these two targets that were on that high ground. So I think it would have just been a, a better use of rocket to have gotten the sure damage. And, you know, like, if you see, we haven't secured that kill on that Roadhog yet. Or... Yeah, so, like, we could have possibly helped that Roadhog be killed during that Graviton surge maybe killed whatever else was in it as well. So I think getting the sure damage, the sure use out of that rocket there would have been a little bit better. But overall, we're not doing badly. Our, I mean, our team kind of clutched on this whole team fight for us. But, you know, we didn't really... We didn't really mess it up when we came back. This player seems to have a general mentality of just use the rocket to start off a fight with someone. And I think that's kind of a habit he wants to clean up a little bit. So now we really want to take the high ground and I'm pretty sure that's what he said, though I don't speak Portuguese. We want to get a good angle. Uh, we use our rocket again on the Roadhog. We use it a little bit too early. I think we probably could have held it kept firing at him while he was still in a good angle for us to fire at him. And then when he moved to that difficult angle, that's when we fire our rocket and finish him off. That's what the rocket's really helpful for. We had a great headshot combo on that McCree. And now we're moving up to here. Now if we go back, I think this is kind of a key mistake. We're right here. We don't have, we have a hundred health. Our, our Reinhardt is low, yeah, when we don't have our biotic field for another four seconds, but we just kind of get out of here for some reason. And I think we really need to be taking this high ground at this time because they have two players down. I think we are at full strength still. And we see this soldier just come out and hop along. He's going to keep hopping out this way. This soldier probably already used his biotic fields. We have a rocket available, so what I want to see here is while he's outside his Reinhardt shield, fire at him, take him down, and put a rocket into him. But we just kind of disengage from the whole situation. We fire our rocket immediately, which really wasn't going to help us too much. And then we just get out of there. And I, don't, I just don't know why we do that when we all drop down to here. I, get, I guess the idea was we need to move the payload, but Lucio's got the payload. I know he's only one person, but like once we get to this bridge, once we get under this bridge anyway, it's not going to matter. Getting it a little bit around the corner to like here isn't going to make a difference from being like right underneath the bridge. The important thing right now is to get the best positioning to win the fight, and that's this entire high ground area. Both team comps are double hit scan. Both team comps have a McCree and a Soldier 76. 
whoever has this high ground spot is going to win the team fight. So we really gave up an opportunity to get that high ground and secure the advantage. And we really gave it up for no reason. So now it's a lot more difficult. We don't have our Reinhardt with us. We're coming up here. We're poking. It's not going to work. But like we, I think we had the idea of using our ultimate with nano boost and that was going to do it for us. But we needed to just take in that high ground when we had the shot. And now they're kind of all over the place on us. We're a man down. McCree does a crazy flank on the right of us and we're going to take him out for being so silly. I don't know what Zenyatta's doing up here, but we easily kill him. Uh, we're, we're, we're playing back, we're playing very patient, and that's the way we should be playing 76. I just want to point out that he's doing a lot of the right things right now. Just if he had taken this high ground earlier, that probably would have made the difference. Because if we watch this, now this soldier is going to be dueling him, and we both have our biotic fields down. He's actually getting some heals from Ana. So our best bet is to land this rocket that we shoot at him. And it's difficult because we are on the low ground and he's on the high ground. So they have the better position. They We both have double hit scan. They're probably going to end up winning this fight nine times out of ten. So just get our team back together, reset. And now we're all going to go up and take the high ground. What we probably should have done initially when we had that advantage. Now we got another advantage because our McCree just took out their McCree. So we are in an excellent position to take this high ground, to kill their team, and take the point. Take out the Zenyatta. And I think this is just unfortunate. Because your Ana dies right when you're popping Tactical Visor. Like, you know, it was actually right before you press Q. And, you know, if you had noticed the kill feed, you shouldn't have popped this visor, I think. You know, it, it looks like you might have been able to win anyway without the nano boost, but I think it might have been better to just wait off for your Ana to come back. Honestly, if this Roadhog wasn't flanking you and pushed you down like this, it might have worked out. So I just want to point out to everyone, this is what good grouping up looks like. He just comes out here. He recognizes that his, his team's still in spawn. He's not going to just go in and start poking, uh, give himself an opportunity to be, to be picked off by the enemy team. He just comes here, takes a knee, and just waits for his respawns to come back so they can move in his six. This is what good, smart regrouping looks like. It's as simple as just waiting. So now we're going to come back in a six, and we're going to go take that high ground spot. So we're doing everything right so far. We use our rocket a little bit early. I don't think I would have just used it to fire into the shield like that. Yeah, yeah. And now we get caught reloading when we want to kill this soldier, which is definitely the move at the time. We get slept, and then we get... It looks like we got hooked at the same time that the fire strike hit us. Yeah, we got, we got hooked then. So, you know, once our Reinhardt got moved out of the way, we were just all sitting ducks. I've watched this clip many times. I don't think there was much more this soldier could have done. He just got CC'd by the sleep dart. CC'd by the hook. Wasn't too much he could have done about those. But the strategy honestly should just keep going back to that tunnel. Keep going back to that high ground until it works. Yeah, there we go. Eventually they will crack. Again, we fire the rocket into the shield. Like, that's 120 damage, sure, but it's really a waste of a rocket that we put onto an 8 second cooldown. And I'd rather be saving that rocket to fight the soldier that we know is probably still on this platform right here. Uh, so we, we, doesn't matter, we take down the Reinhardt, we throw a rocket in, we get our rocket just obliterates their Ana, which was just... I don't know if that was luck or whatever, but hey, you just got three kills and it's working out for us. So we kill the Roadhog. Our team comes in, finishes off the soldier and the Roadhog. Maybe we pop Visor a little bit too early there. Like you pop Visor and you assumed that the Soldier 76 and the Roadhog was down there and the Soldier 76 and the Roadhog were still alive. It probably could have just kept on to that visor for when the, the respawns were coming in and just stop them from coming onto the payload. I think that would have been the most efficient use of it. 
Also, we jump down onto the ground here and we're pushing the payload. I actually don't think that was the move. Like, we've got more than enough people to push this payload right now. I think the best thing for us to have done is just sit on that high ground that is like immediately, not the one, not the high ground to the right, but the high ground that's immediately behind us. The one that actually has a good look at their spawn as they come in. Like, just sit there and, and wait. There's actually an Earth Shatter that comes in and gets dropped onto the team. And we're just, just, just ever so out of this Earth Shatter. Because this payload wouldn't have stopped us from being hit by the Earth Shatter. Kind of got lucky there. Isn't going to end up mattering. But just a general habit is you should be staying on the high ground and, and overlooking this point if we can. And let our teammates push the cart. Because if this did end up mattering, it would have been pretty devastating and totally preventable. These are the type of nitpicky things you have to do to your gameplay once you've hit this master level. I'd like to thank Sting for sending in his gameplay. I hope we all learn from it and it helps him out. At this point in his development, he doesn't have big concepts to learn anymore. He just has these fine details to be perfecting. What I think he should do is just focus on making every team fight's execution perfect. In general, I think he should also focus on being a little bit more conservative about his rocket use because I think you want to be using them more as a knockout blow rather than chunking in some initial damage. Overall, this 76 player is very good and just needs to work on some slight details in just about every scenario. And if he cleans those up, that's how you get to the higher masters, grandmasters, top 500. It's all about making every team fight's execution a little bit better than the one before. That's going to do it for this VOD review. If you'd like to have your own VOD reviewed, please send it in to faultylid at gmail.com. I'm also going to be offering some coaching services on my Patreon very soon, so stay tuned, and I'm going to leave the link for that in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. This has been Forrest for Faulty Lid, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.